So we are in section 1.2 of the textbook, the exponentials. So you would have read that last night. Uh, I would encourage you to stay, um, stay in that textbook. Be very familiar with it. There's a lot of resources in there. Had you look at some of the appendices, the inside covers, uh, just how that book is set up. So you want to spend time in the uh, table of contents. And then also I would encourage you to sit down with the principles of problem solving right there in the prologue as well this weekend. So exponentials, the um, form is that we've got a base right to a certain exponential. And so you'll remember logs will show up. That's the inverse of, uh, of an exponential function. The undoing of an expo exponential is a logarithm. So that'll show up. But today we're with uh, exponentials. And so the uh, we're just going to focus on some of the laws that are in the textbook. Not all of them here. We will use them all. But from the uh, couple, to, couple to highlight, so b to the m, then the quantity raised to the n power, you would multiply the uh, exponents. Right. A over B, so that's just a fraction in there, to the negative N power. Right. All you do is take the reciprocal of the base, and then the exponent would become positive. We'll get into problems where we are uh, ending up simplifying with only positive exponents. So here's one very similar here, B to the K power raised to the negative N. So I'm going to do this in two steps, B to the negative KN. And to get rid, if you will, right, to remove the negative, right, I'm going to then write it in the denominator. So 1 over b to the kn. And so here would be a, a negative exponent over another negative. And so those both would flip. So b would go into the uh, numerator, a into the denominator. And here's a mixed one where we've got a positive on top and a negative on the bottom. So to get only positives, we would end up bringing the denominator up into the numerator, and so we'd end up with a k b to the w. So there would be an example that we do. This is actually on your homework, um, and I was actually just putting this on here to see um, a little bit how you wanted to deal um, with exponents. And so you want to stay away from your calculator. Um, that is not where you want to run to first. You don't want to be punching in all these numbers when really what we want to do is we want to um, change the form of this uh, fraction and simplify it. So I'm going to rewrite what's going on right here. So the numerator stays the same. Right? The denominator, you can think of it as flipping and going to the numerator. So I'm going to just flip it. So 4 to the 34 uh, over 5 right, times 3 to the 49. And now we can just play our exponent game. Right? We'll get cancellation with the 5s. Right? We've got 4 to the 36 in the denominator, 4 to the 34 in the numerator. So that's going to give us 4 squared in the denominator. Up top, we would end up with 3 squared in the uh, numerator. So we'll just cancel terms. We'd end up with 3 squared over 4 squared, which would give us 9 over 16 in simplified form. Well, one more down here. So we've got a quantity y over 2z squared to the negative 4 power. And so I really would encourage you to take your time, space your work out, um, you know, use, use room and uh, so you can see it. And so what I'm going to do is really kind of two steps at once. I'm going to take y to the negative 4, put it in the denominator. Right? This would go to the numerator with the positive 4 for the exponent. And just remembering here, we've got a constant times z squared. So each of those terms ends up getting squared, or sorry, to the fourth power. So 2 to the fourth is 16. Right? z to the 2 power raised to the 4 is 8. And then we've got y to the fourth in the bottom. So we've simplified all with positive exponents. And just to make sure we've knocked all the rest off, so we'll do one more simplify here. We've got a term here. We've got another term. This term is to the is cubed. And so each of those terms ends up getting cubed. So there's 2 to the third. There's a to the third. And there's b to the 12, which would come from 3 times 4. And so then I just I just group terms that are like, so there's the 5 and the 8, give me a 40. Right, here's all the A's, and then there's all the B's. So I just took 
you know, another extra step, one might say, um, but uh, gives me a good chance to go back and check my work at a later time as well. And we'll go into a, a, a quick um, look at at scientific notation. And so the main point is that scientific notation would be a number, which that number up front would be between 1 would be the lowest, it would be less than 10, so 9.99999, and then multiplied by 10 to some exponent where that's going to be a whole number. So we look at this right here, we want to get the leading or the A in terms of just a number between 1 and 10. So to do that, we would move that over three places. And so we'd end up with 8.6251267. And then we have to attach the 10 to the third because we've moved it three to the left, right? And so it actually is three to the right is where it needs to go. And so we'll do it one more time here with a uh, number less than one three, four, five, six. And so we're going to end up with 2.18, and then it's 10 to the negative 6. Because this number, the actual number, is that number with a decimal point moved six places to the left. All right, I've got a little something to show you. might capture your imagination here for just a second. And so I'm using MATLAB here, so you might not be familiar with this program, but I'm just going to make sure you know that I'm not rigging the deck here at all. So a problem we just talked about that was up there had a question, what do you get? I'm going to take 0.7 to keep adding 0.1 to it. So I'm going to add 0.1. That gives me, obviously, 2.8. And I'm using a long format here for a reason. And then what I'm going to do is take the answer, and I'm going to add 0.1 to it. 2.9 sounds about right. 2.7 plus 0.1 twice. I'm going to do it another time. That gives me 3. I'm going to do it another time. Oh my goodness. That gives me... I could have swore that yeah, that should be 3.1. And look, and this is a, a very high-powered uh, computer program here. Uh, it, it tells me that it's 3.10001 right there. So... What should we do? And so radicals and rational exponents, and so fractions. Um, so the base uh, b to the n, where n is a fraction. And so if n were 1 half, we'd end up with the square root. And so the square root, it's, this is an example. If the square root of c equals d, then that would mean that d squared has to equal c. And if the nth root of c equals d, that would mean that d to the n has to equal c. And then if n is even, then c has to be greater than 0 and d has to be greater than 0. So we'll focus in a little bit more on, on some of those rules, um, some of those particulars. But these are all the properties uh, that are found on page 18 in your, in your textbook. So you should just have that open as we're going through this. And so let's do an example here. Let's take the fourth root of that term right in there. And so we're going to take the fourth, I'm going to take the fourth root of all three of those terms individually. Um, so it's like using one-fourth, right, the one-fourth power um, to each of those terms. And so a lot of times in these we end up trying to get, right, to get rid of the fourth root, we want to find a, uh, a base that would have a fourth power to it. And so it works out here that 625 is 5 to the fourth. Right, p to the eighth power taken the fourth root, so it's going to be eight times one fourth, giving me eight over four. Same thing with q, and there's a little bit of a special issue when uh, when that equals one, and we'll talk more about it. That needs to be a, a an absolute value. We get p squared. Here we end up with five time, uh, to the four divided by fourth power, so that's just five to the first power, otherwise known as just five. So we're hopefully just continuing to get more and more comfortable here. And so we'll take a look at just a couple last ones here. So uh, a to the 1 over n, right? that would be the nth root of a. You could write it like this. Right? Those are equivalent to each other. 
a to the m divided by n power, that would be the nth root of a to the m. So again, we're getting into these fractional exponents. And a to the negative m over n, that would just be a 1 over a to the mn, which would be 1 over the nth root of a to the m. And then they also talk about in the textbook about rationalizing the denominator. And that would be eliminating radicals in the denominator. So I've got an example right here. So y to the fourth over square root 6, y to the negative 2. And so we'll simplify bringing y to the negative 2 to the numerator. That gives me 4 plus 2 uh, as the exponent for y. Uh, square root of 6, I multiply top and bottom by square root 6. That gets rid of the radical. It just gives me 6 down there. And so that would be the simplified expression. So, rationalizing the denominator.